All right, guys, how y'all doing tonight? We are just about ready to get rolling here for our live stream show. Almost ready. Just dialing in the last few items here, and uh, then we'll get rolling on the show. Um, I have uh, Captain Frank in studio tonight. Uh, tonight is Captain Joe Drew's birthday, so unfortunately, a bulk of of our live show prospective guests are uh, celebrating with Captain Joe. So Schmammered, if you will. Yeah. They're they're celebrating a little too hard, I'm sure, to be on this on the show tonight. So uh, not uh, a bunch of guests tonight. We almost had our live show call in dialed in, but unfortunately uh, couldn't figure that one out last minute. But we will get there for next week's uh, show, and uh, we're going to have some call-ins. Might even have a way for you guys to call in. So instead of texting questions, you'll be able to call in to the show. Dude, that's awesome. Isn't it cool? Heck yeah, man. Yeah. Jerry Sloan, thanks for getting us kicked off, man, with those 100 stars. Appreciate you, buddy. Uh, we are just, oh, Tim Harris with 830 stars. Thank you, buddy. Uh, we are just getting ready to uh, get started here. Jennifer Roberts, the gate is locked. The door is closed. There is absolutely no way that you are getting on the show. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Jose Marquez, what's going on, man? Trevor Keller, thanks for watching. Gary Bresnick, Michael Toulin, thank you guys. Oh, Dennis Mills with 200 stars. Betty Brown, thank you very much. Appreciate you as well. Now, uh, last week I did have someone uh, text me and say, I feel like... Uh, all you guys do is drink and you don't talk about fishing and I don't know how to win. Uh, no one ever tells us how to win. So I'm done watching your show. But I feel like we always talk about how to enter to win the free trips every week. I'm pretty sure. If not, let's go ahead and tell <sighs> Yeah. Them. So I wanted to really <clears throat> emphasize that this week you can win by commenting one time. You literally just have to comment one time. That's it. There it is, guys. There it is. Betty Brown just entered to win by sending those 50 stars. But she didn't have to send in the 50 stars. You don't have to send in 50 stars. But it was stars. a good comment. Yeah, you don't have to send in anything. Right. All you have to do is comment. Bonnie Korniak just entered by saying hi. Christine, thank you very much. Hope you and Pete are doing well. Thanks for those stars, guys. Um, so as I was saying, all you have to do is comment one time and you're entered to win the free trips. And then all you have to do is watch the show live. You have to watch the show the entirety. And then if you're picked as the lucky winner, you have to claim your free trip. So comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream to be entered to win. You can watch on YouTube. You can watch on one of the Facebook groups. But you have to comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina page to get entered to win. David Pruitt, thanks for those stars, man. Dennis Mills, appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate those uh, stars and support. If you're watching on YouTube, the Facebook stars are just a way for people to uh, show their support and uh, support the show. We just got some new technology as I was talking about before, that is going to make it possible for us to be able to uh, allow callers. So we're excited about that. Caller 5, you're on the air. I can't wait to see that. I've been I waiting my whole entire life. <laughs> yeah, Josh is now not only going to be running the show, but also the soundboard. I don't know if he knows that yet. I think I just told him. <laughs> He's giving me a funny look right now. <laughs> Anthony Barnes, appreciate those stars. Thank and now you very he's much. mooning you. <laughs> Jesus, Josh. Hey, can I get my microphone over Josh. here so you get the Howard Stern show? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. You do need a microphone so you stop yelling at us. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let they hear me. Thanks, Larry White. Appreciate those stars, buddy. Thank you very much. Oh, man, that Eagle Rare is so good. It's good. I love Eagle Rare. It's good. I think that's my, one of my new favorites for sure. Uh, Joe from Osprey. What's up, buddy? Thanks for watching. Anthony Barnes. What's up, man? Tiffany Lee. Appreciate you guys. We are just about ready to get rolling. We got some cool stuff to talk about tonight and uh, some stuff to go over. 
some photos to show you, some weather to talk about, and uh, some announcements. We got some uh, big news this past week. Couple couple pieces of big news. Uh, so, you guys ready? I, I'm gonna assume they said yes. I know I'm ready because <laughs> I have no idea what this news is. All right, I don't think I do. Denoris Hall with 1,200 stars. That Appreciate is big you, news. Yeah, yeah, that's big news right there. All right, let's start this thing off. Get this camera rolling. Let's see if the button works. Button does work. What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in and uh, checking out the show tonight. Uh, and uh, thanks for coming in, Frank. Yeah, no Appreciate problem. It was you. a long day, but I, I just felt like I, had, I, I wanted to be here. <laughs> I, didn't want, I didn't want to leave you by yourself. He was on his way to karaoke and decided to stop by. Yeah. Don't lie to me. That's it. <laughs> it's on the way. I mean, I might as well stop for it an is. hour and have it, a few, you know, pre-gamers so I sound more beautifuler. More beautifuler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when are we going to get that video we talked about? Uh, we're going to work on it. We'll <laughs> I don't people know. People asking that. me on the boat today. So there's there's a lot of people. I feel like a lot of people are waiting for that karaoke, but. I don't know. We'll see if it ever It'll comes happen. to fruition. I promise. I promise. It will. I've heard the promise before, but I feel like it's an empty promise. All right, so what were you talking about this weather? I'm getting there. Josh and is finishing news, up what he's doing. We got doing. big news. We got to get into the inshore photos. Don't try to steer my show, bro. I'm the captain. Fine. <laughs> you do it all, man. Uh, Josh, can you scroll up a little bit on the Facebook comments when you get a second? A little higher. We got to get all the way up a little higher. Keep going, keep going. A little bit more. Yeah. Richard Blazak, thanks for those stars, man. Dennis Mills with a thousand stars. Appreciate you, dude. Three week streak for both of those guys. And then Estelle Wolfman following it up. And with that, we are going to roll into these uh, inshore photos and show you guys what we've been seeing inshore. Uh, and then uh, we're going to roll out to uh, our nearshore and offshore photos next. So let's show you all what we've been seeing inshore, what's been popping, and uh, what's been going on inshore. Uh, so inshore right now, we've got the redfish. The redfish have been biting well for sure. Uh, I think these guys have been catching more and more lately off a of dock. That's a big one. That's a monster. Look at his tail, though. He's got a little yeah. uh, little little bite out of his tail. Going some on dolphin, there. some dolphin chasing for sure. But uh, nice red fish. Most of these red fish are coming on shrimp. It seems like. Josh, can you click on the photo for me? He's got a red tail. Though. It looks like boots. Uh, <laughs> that's messed up. <laughs> So a lot of redfish at night around the bridge as well. The soft plastics have definitely been a popular item uh, to get those uh, redfish, the live shrimp around the docks. Uh, I don't have control, Josh. Uh, I don't know what's going on. There it goes. Uh, so a lot of redfish around the docks, bridge. We've been seeing them around. I don't know. I keep losing it. So, uh, been seeing them around the dock and uh, bridge, and most of them have come up on the live shrimp, on the live bait during the day, and then the soft plastics around the uh, flats and around the bridge lights. Snook have come back in a big way. You've been seeing them in the yeah. morning. Like the, I've those, been seeing those reds, though, are bigger than what I had been seeing. They were just kind of, you know, like yeah. 21 inches maybe, but those things look like they're a... They got a little bit more girthiness, on, girthiness and length on them. <laughs> yeah, they they definitely been bigger. I think a lot of those redfish are starting to move inshore now uh, from their near shore spawn. So I think that has a lot to do with some of the bigger fish that we've been seeing. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what could be going on with those uh, redfish, but they've definitely gotten bigger. I would agree with that. And we've been seeing more of them as of late. Too, but the snook are definitely getting very active, spreading out throughout the entire area. We're seeing a lot of those snook biting well. And um, on the flats at night around the bridge lights, dock lights, definitely been going well. And uh, we've also been seeing plenty of trout too. Uh, Carrie Whirl uh, showing off her trout from uh, the jetties of John's Pass. Look at that trout. That one's one I wanted to talk about. Look at that thing hanging out of its mouth. So he was fishing for snook with yeah. those flare hawk jigs yeah. and ended up catching that monster trout. 
Uh, definitely not something you see every day, right? I feel like I see his face every show. Yeah, John John <laughs> Sasser, he sends yeah. in a ton of Man, photos for that, us. And, the, the, and all of his are from John's Pass, right? John Sasser mainly fishes John's Pass, yeah. but he does fish Sand Key a little bit yeah. uh, during... Uh, yeah, During the old he's, winter time, he knows what he's doing for sure. He's got a lot. He catches a lot of great fish. Yeah, yeah, he knows what he's he doing. He wouldn't starve in a. You know, uh, <laughs> if you the know zombies I mean? came, if the zombies came to eat, eat, eat our you'd want him off, on your team. Yeah, you want to <laughs> hire that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Josh. Let's go uh, to a video real quick, and uh, want to thank our bottle sponsors. Definitely uh, brought us to. Uh, Talking about that real quick because we saw Carrie's photo. Carrie brought us this bottle of Buffalo Trace. Uh, shout out to Carrie Whirl. And then uh, John Anderson from Iowa brought us a bunch of presents from Iowa. Got a bottle of Weller's, two bottles of Eagle Rare. Um, the other one uh, didn't make it. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> and then uh, there's uh, Sazerac Rye. John brought us a store pick from uh, his hometown. Some uh, unique local Which whiskey. One uh, John Anderson is not here because he brought six bottles, and I only I only wanted to bring a couple to the studio. I didn't want to uh, overload our our booze carts getting a little full. So John Anderson is going to be the bottle sponsor for a couple weeks now. Okay. <laughs> but Sounds thank good. you guys. Appreciate you, Carrie and uh, John Anderson for sending us those bottles and the gifts. We really appreciate it. And uh, let's roll right into those near shore and offshore photos. Show you all what we've been seeing near shore and offshore. Mike Hart, thanks for those 500 stars, man. Appreciate it. I thought that you, was dude. a picture of Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf? Yeah. No, that's uh, Bearded Todd. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Teen Wolf, Bearded Todd. Eh, it could be interchangeable. Who knows? Uh, we've definitely been seeing some nice mangroves out there on the 39 hour trip. Been seeing. A little bit of a tough bite here and there, but overall, pretty steady mangrove bite. On this last trip, Will was saying that the mangroves actually bit better in the rougher conditions. Through the nighttime, they actually had nicer weather, and uh, the mangrove bite and the bite overall was a little slower at night. Hmm. Uh, but then during the day, the weather picked up, and the bite picked up with the weather. So that's pretty interesting. Wow, that's cool. But there's a nice big old mangrove Dang. right there. That is a big old mangrove. How, I would, you know how big the uh, winter was? I mean, that no, had to have been. No, I didn't, unless they didn't get in the pool. I didn't get the weight on it. John big Martin big. has won the mangrove snapper jackpot the last two weeks, and he did not have the biggest mangrove uh, because uh, people keep not entering not the jackpot. Entering. Yeah, that's how it happens. I think it was not this trip, the last trip John was on. He, ha he won the mangrove snapper and the red grouper jackpot. And he had the third smallest red grouper and, like, the fourth smallest mangrove. So yeah. many people weren't in the jackpot. He took it home just yeah. because no, the, the bigger people uh, that caught bigger fish weren't in the jackpot, hmm. surprisingly enough. So pretty crazy, but it is what it there is. You, you never you know. pay to play. Yeah, you got to be in it to win it, as in they it say. In it to win it. Some big scamp grouper we've been seeing out there. Some smaller scamp, but they're good eating stuff. Still, too. Look at that scamp. That's a beautiful fish. That is. And another big old mangrove snapper. The blackfin tuna bite slowed down a little bit for us. The weather's been a little bit rougher. So with rougher conditions, it makes flatlining for those blackfin a little bit more tricky. But I've uh, been seeing them when the weather allows some steady mangrove snapper action. The gags are starting to get better, and we're looking <coughs> forward to gag grouper season. Hey, and then the big trigger fish have been awesome. Uh, been seeing a lot of these big triggers. Out yeah, we've there been catching water. a ton of triggers out on our ten hour. Just uh, they're just not big enough. You yeah, because in, in that in that uh, that depth, we're fishing as as deep as uh, well, maybe just over eighty, and uh, we're not seeing any uh, any keepers. But I know that they're see you're definitely seeing them in that deeper water for sure. Yeah, it definitely has a lot to do with that deeper water. It seems like these big triggers, the legal size trigger fish, seem to be at least 140 to 160 foot plus yeah. is where we've been seeing most of these bigger trigger fish. So got to be out there in deeper water to get the big boy trigger fish. And that's where we've been targeting lately. Still catching a few hogfish, but definitely slowed down quite a bit Man. lately. 
You're not lying. It's, it's been tough. It has been tough. Uh, on the hog fish. Right, on the hog fishing. Uh, you know, we had a charter today that I know a lot of them were expecting to, us to get on the hog fish like we did the last time they were out on the boat, and there's nothing I would I would want more than uh, to make that happen. But um, I tried in the shallow stuff, and, you know, we're having an algae bloom. Yeah. And it, it, the fishing Well, is, I wouldn't say quite an algae bloom, but we're having well, the seagrass it, show a, back up. Yeah, it's like a... I don't know if it's a grass or is, is it a grass? Yeah, it's I think considered it's a grass. a grass. I thought it was some kind of algae, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it's made fishing a little tough in the shallower stuff. So, our, like our half days, we're having to go out there uh, uh, quite a quite a bit. And um, now today was a different story. I was uh, I went out there and I fished uh, fifty. I think I started at fifty five. Uh, just because the weather was a little rough, and we had a ten hour private charters. A lot of you guys that are watching right now were on that and. Uh, and we ended up working our way out to almost 90 foot. And, and we had a blast out there in that deep water stuff. Uh, but two days ago, if we were fishing in the 55 to, to 60 to 65, it was just a mess. Every line that came up had this stuff on it. I had to go out, you know, super deep. And then uh, some of the guys running the half days, including myself, were having the same problem. Uh, it was up to the north. It was up to the south. And I, and I went and I tried in the same area today, and it was gone. So. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it just moves with the with the tide, um, but we hardly had any stops where it was on every line. But up till today, it was on every single line, every single stop, and it made fishing pretty difficult the last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That green, it's almost like a seagrass, but yeah. it's almost like a slime and seagrass. Right, slime. and I think it, I think it, it had something to do with it. it pushed the fish either off the ledges or something. I, I'm not really sure exactly. What's going on right now with it? I haven't had enough time to process it because we just went out there today and it was not there, and uh, we got very few fish in that in that depth. So I don't know exactly if it was just a bad bite. I talked to the half day boat and they had a tough one also mm-hmm. this morning. But the the minute that we that uh, the tide started uh, turning a little bit and then you had uh, a better bite in the afternoon. We, oh today. man, it was yeah incredible. I mean, yeah, the lane snappers and vermilions were just on fire like they hadn't eaten in a week, you know, and we did we did really well. And that's we felt- when the barometer started moving today. Yeah. So we had that little low pressure come through and then that high pressure building behind it, and you yeah. had that pressure gradient we overnight. Dr- we dropped anchor at about 11.15 on, like, probably our fifth stop, and we had 30 fish in the box. And uh, that's not a lot, uh, in case you don't know. If we had, like, 50, 60 people on the boat. And we dropped the anchor, and this cloud came over us, and you felt this little, little cool breeze Mm-hmm. And bam, it was on. We had 250 fish in the box in in a, a matter of uh, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, it was it just, as fast as we could go around pulling up five, six, seven at a time, trying to remember numbers. If we yeah. could carry more, we would. But uh, it was it was just like a light switch just turned on. It was just the minute that that li- whatever that. <laughs> Yeah, you can totally tell it's a pressure. You can feel it. You yeah, know? Josh, can you pull up uh, the weather page for me real quick? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that because this goes into how weather affects fishing, and this is something that a lot of people always want to talk about. And I find this really interesting myself because uh, I think most offshore fishermen and really inshore, nearshore fishermen too uh, are somewhat. Uh, amateur meteorologists and i find it really interesting how weather and weather patterns can correlate with fishing so can you scroll all the way to the bottom of the weather links page to our ultimate storm forecast our friend uh, mike boylan with mike's weather page uh, his website there is at the bottom of our weather links page and this is uh, the page that i live and die by i feel like i I'm on this website more than my own website. It's pretty crazy. Scroll down a little bit for me, Josh, real slow so the viewers can see where I go. Keep scrolling a little bit more, a little bit more. Keep going. Keep going. He's got a lot of weather stuff on his page. <laughs> a little bit more. We're almost there. Yep. So right here, these are the, what we call the prog charts, the stuff right above my head uh, that uh, Josh is opening up for us. So that is what occurred today. That little frontal boundary moved past, and that was probably what turned the fish on once that got past us. That passed us today about 10, 10.45, 11 o'clock noon on shore, 
and right behind that front is when the fish turned yep, on. Sure, sure was, and it, it, I mean it was like a light shine. Luckily, I had, uh, our private charter today was the Sunshine Skyway Fishing Club. So mm. I know if there's one thing that people know that, it, that the bridge fish is that there are times where there is nothing biting on those bridges, and then that tide changes up, and boom, it's on. So I didn't have anybody complaining, which was great. That, you know, I, I explained what was going on. I said, I really do think it's going to turn around, and, and it did. It was just like, I, it was just like, it could change in a light switch, and it surely did. And Although we didn't have a whole bunch of uh, bigger fish that came in, the grouper bite was was almost nil. They've moved off to you know 120 foot mm-hmm. uh, or better. Um, everyone was super great and understanding. And then the minute that it it was on, you know, it was just like it was just nonstop. It changed the whole mood in the day, and yeah, and uh, they were great the whole time. So it was it was good. We came back with man, I want to see like 300 plus lane snappers, 125 plus vermilion snappers. And then, you know, we had some yellow tails mixed in there, mangrove snappers, just a few of those, and, uh, you know, a hogfish or two. It, it, you know, it wasn't a stellar bite on the bigger fish, but certainly it was a, it was a fun trip. We were a lot able, of quality. Yeah, we were able to put something together, and, and uh, it was just I, – I just don't believe that if I was in that shallow stuff when that when that – front came through that i don't know that it would have happened uh right there just because of that 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 algae bloom yeah it was a risky situation where i just said well we got to you know i just want to go out there and i just really felt it and rolled the dice yeah i rolled the dice a little bit but i uh you know i just i just had a good feeling about it yeah but anyhow it ended up being a pretty good trip good can you go back to the weather page real quick josh i want to finish explaining that to our viewers so if you're looking at this uh uh, pull back up today. So uh, on today's weather, that blue line that's right up front of, or right above my head is the cold front. Can you zoom in a little bit? And move that so my head's not blocking it. Yeah. So the blue line is the cold front. That green stuff is that prefrontal activity. So as that cold front moved past us, it was a super weak front. So once it moved past us, the barometer started dropping just a little bit. Because it wasn't such a strong front, the barometer didn't plummet. We didn't have that crazy weather. So it excited the fish because that barometer started to fall. And uh, that little bit of cooler air, drier air behind the front really changed the pressure, got those fish excited. Uh, Now, if you go back to the weather page there, Josh, so the big one right above my head is today. If you scroll down a little bit, the smaller ones, the one on the left is tomorrow and the one to the right is the next day. So let's look at tomorrow. Uh, So tomorrow, this is, yeah, tomorrow. So tomorrow that front moves further down and always, tip or not always, but most of the time behind these low pressures, a high pressure starts to build in behind it. So what happens is called a pressure gradient. So as the low pressure gets pushed by the high pressure behind it, this pressure line uh, develops. And that's what a lot of times will cause some really, really strong winds. But because that low pressure is so weak, this high pressure doesn't create that tight pressure gradient. So that's why tomorrow's weather is so nice. And that barometer will start creeping back up. A falling barometer is always best, but if the barometer is moving, the fishing's good. So it should still be a pretty good bite tomorrow. And then go to that day after. So the day after, the high pressure is pretty much completely settled in. I'll let you scroll up a little bit. So the day after, this is Tuesday, that high pressure is pretty much completely settled into our area, and we've got another big low sweeping across the, st- uh, across the country, pushing more weather, and that's when that pressure gradient starts to build because you have a high, strong, high pressure with a low pressure pushing on the backside of it. You've got a low pressure sitting down in Cuba. So basically, you've got three pressure systems pushing together that's going to create that pressure gradient. So... Josh, can you go back to our weather links page? So all of those little lines and stuff, here's how they correlate. Go back to our uh, wind finder at the top, uh, and then go to the 5 and 10 hour forecast for me, Josh. And so you can see by scrolling down a little bit, so scroll down to the days, you can see Monday, nice day, pretty moderate winds, about two foot scroll up down a little bit so the people can see yeah so right around two foot and then if we go down to tuesday you can see where that pressure gradient starts to kick in that east wind tuesday mornings from that strong high pressure 
that strong high pressure creates that east wind and then as that pressure gradient settles in it kind of calms for a second and then starts to pick back up as that high pressure slides out Wednesday morning. So that's what causes these, these up and downs in the wind patterns. There's a lot of them this week, for sure. Yeah, and uh, if you keep scrolling, Josh. So then Thursday, it kind of starts sucking that wind up towards that stronger low. And then if you scroll down into the weekend, it, oh, that changed. Yeah, yeah. That, that changed. <laughs> that's not good. That's like the weekend off. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, this morning, this weekend, upcoming weekend looked beautiful. Uh, and it has already changed significantly, which this is a great example of how quickly the weather can change. But this weekend is still seven days out, so this can change back to beautiful. What I had seen this morning was that low pressure misses us, and uh, we sit down there in kind of the eddy, and it calms down this weekend. But obviously that's changed. Party uh, at my house Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not. Hopefully Frank's party's canceled and we're all out fishing. That's but. true. I'd rather do that. <laughs> but all right, let's. We digressed enough. Let's get back into the photos. Rip through these. Finish these off real quick. What we were saying was uh, hogfish bites slow down a lot, uh, but we're still picking up a few here and there. I think uh, you guys caught one keeper hogfish today, right? One keeper hogfish. It it pains me to say that. It, it really pains does. you to admit it, Gloria. Coopers, appreciate those 50 stars. And uh, let's see if we got any more photos. I don't have control. There we go. Uh, so look at that one. I saw that one. I yeah. saw that one with the sky, skyway right there. I mean, yeah, that that's... was sent in to us from our email or for our Fox 13 report. It's pretty cool to see the skyway in the background. Yeah. Still some kingfish on the troll. Look at that guy. I saw that red grouper come in. Yeah, that was a monster. Yeah, that was a big fatty. I think it was 17 plus. 17 and change. Almost yeah. uh, 17 and well, a half. Well, one of the, the two of those were. I... Yeah. This one was the big one. Okay. This one was still pretty big. I think it was a solid 14 and a half, almost 15 pounds. The blackfin tunas, the mangroves. I'm going backwards, I think. There we go. We're going this way. There it is. Yeah, there we go. No, nope. we're repeating again. Now I think we're done. I don't know. Are we out of photos? No. There we go. We're into new photos now. I must have put duplicates in there. Amberjack season is coming up. We're going to talk about that soon. Some nice scamp. Now we're done. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. Let's uh, give away our first trip of the night. I think we're overdue to give away our first trip of the night. We got to give away a five-hour half day for two. Nick Nieves with those thousand stars. Appreciate you, Nick, and the entire Sunshine Skyway Fishing Club. Vicky, uh, Arm, Vicky Poole and uh, Linda Vol. appreciate you guys as well. Thank you very much. Uh, let's get over to the other screen and see who won that five-hour half day for two guests. We do have sound effects now, so hold on to your seats as we roll the drum rolls. <laughs> Not those sound effects, Frank. <laughs> uh, Alan Kirk, appreciate you watching, man. Long time, long time uh, listener, first time winner. <laughs> yeah, appreciate you, Alan. Thanks for watching. Sorry, it took so long. <laughs> uh, that's good though. I'm glad he finally got a win in there. Uh, you won the five hour half day for two. Remember, all you have to do is comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. If you're picked as the lucky winner, you do have to text us at that phone number in front of Captain Frank there within about five minutes to claim that free trip. So that's how you do it. And that's how you win that free trip. So don't forget. And uh, also, guys, we want to talk to you a little bit about some of the announcements. So the big news uh, announced this past week that I kind of alluded to was Amberjack season. We've got an official announcement. It is April 25th. It is, what is that, six days from May 1st. We finally can say that uh, Amberjack season has been announced and finalized for the entire month of May. So we're excited uh, to be able to target Amberjack on those 12-hour extreme trips, those 39-hour uh, trips, the 44-hour trips. It's going to be a good month of May to get out there and target those Amberjack. Amberjack fishing overall, 
uh, hasn't been uh, the best. Right. It's been a little bit tough. There are few and far between out there, but we are able to uh, catch them uh, and harvest them. We're, ab- we're always able to catch them, but we're able to harvest mm-hmm. them in the month of May. So we're looking forward to that. Adam Wilson, appreciate those stars, man. Thank you very much for those 500 stars. Uh, Mark Tuncray, appreciate those stars as well. Uh, so Amberjack season, entire month of May. Uh, Amberjack uh, was one of the big news items this week, but we also had uh, Governor uh, DeSantis and the FWC announced our finalized private recreational red snapper season, uh, and that was finalized for June 4th uh, until uh, end June 4th till uh, July 28th. So June 4th to July 28th is the private, private recreational red snapper season. FWC's private recreational red snapper season, June 4th through July 28th. But we're not private. We're federal for hire. So federal for hire red snapper season is June 1st through end of day, August 2nd. So our red snapper season was finalized and announced probably three weeks ago, and we've been talking about that already. So do not get that confused and do not call me and ask about uh, FWC's announcement because it has nothing, no bearing on us at Hubbard's Marina. Uh, our federal four hire season, federally permitted charter boats and party moats in the Gulf of Mexico are June 1st through end of day, August 2nd, whereas private wrecks on a private boat, that means no money exchanged hands, you're going out with buddies for free. That is private recreational fishing. That's June 4th to July 28th. Don't get yourself in trouble. Don't get in trouble. <laughs> Don't get them mixed up. And remember, your season, your trip has to start and end in open season. So a few people have called me about this Friday's 39-hour trip because it technically comes home on, on uh, May 1st. So you cannot keep Amberjacks just because you come home on May 1st. First, you have to start your trip and end your trip inside open season. So uh, keep that in mind for red snapper season two. You can't, like, for example, if you're in a private recreational boat and you, your first day is August or Jan- June 4th, you can't leave June 3rd and head out there and start fishing June 4th at midnight. You got to leave the dock when it's June 4th. For the... For everybody. For the for the red snappers, you're saying? For any fish. Like, for yeah. any fish. They, they've they clarified uh, very clearly and crystallized the fact that you have to start fishing when the season opens and end fishing when the season closes. That's when you leave the dock. You can't leave the dock. You, your trip right. must depart and return during open season. So we used I'm to... I'm only asking to clarify. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, you, you knew, I know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I you're don't clarifying that, I don't for even viewers. I what you're saying right now. <laughs> but I know that you know what you're talking about. I just can't understand you. Yeah, we used to have a, uh, a red snapper season opener, and we always used to leave May 31st, and we'd start fishing midnight on June 1st yeah. when red snapper opened. We did that for, for years. years. Yeah, yeah, for And sure. uh uh, we've always done that. and uh, Not they, cool anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> we got boarded like three or four years ago by an FWC officer who was really following the letter of the law mm. and was trying to give us a ticket guys. for us for it. And uh, I made a f- couple phone calls, and uh, long story short, he was told to leave us alone and get off the boat uh, by a supervisor. And then the next year, they uh, didn't bother us. And then the year after that, I think it was either last year or the year before, they boarded us again talking about it, and I was like, no, 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 we've already been through this. And then shortly thereafter, at a golf council meeting that was brought up in discussion, so the law and laws were passed. The law wasn't <laughs> clarified, so... They clarified the law, yeah. specifically for me. <laughs> I felt honored. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than yeah. ask for permission. So and to be made an example in yeah. federal regulation, I, I felt honored, so... Yeah. Awesome. Your, your season must leave and depart. You know what's really cool on that subject is that issue that came up with our two-day bag limits where they were telling us the way we've been fishing since the 1960s was illegal. Uh, I started doing some research in trying to fix that problem and uh, was able to get the law totally changed in uh, two meetings, which was incredible in and of itself. But uh, in doing research, Refish Amendment 1, so 
the MSA or Magnuson Stevens Act is what governs our entire fishery. And MSA was written and enacted in 1976. In the Gulf of Mexico, the first uh, amendment uh, for refish management was Amendment 1. It passed in uh, 88, in 1988. And in 1988, they took handwritten notes at the, at the federal fisheries meetings. And one of the first refish amendments, refish Amendment 1, uh, there was a, uh, a specific uh regulation written for multi-day trips Mm -hmm. and in reading that because that's what i was researching because of our issue in reading that they specifically mentioned they were making these new laws for the first time in the gulf of mexico and handwritten in there is uh specific to the boat that fishes the middle grounds out of the out of madeira beach uh we we are making an uh an exception to the possession limits or some, 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 but they specifically mentioned the really? Florida fishermen uh, and the flying fish fleet out of Madeira Beach, That's which cool. were our boats. And right there in, in public information in federal law, it was pretty cool. Yeah. That's yeah, that, that gave me a little bit of chills when I was doing that research a couple months ago. So pretty cool stuff, pretty cool history to say the least. So we talked about amberjack season and red snapper season. One thing I wanted to ask you guys was, before we get into questions, was about um, uh, guests. So uh, we have uh, had a lot of our Hubbard's Marina uh, fishing captains and crew on the show. Uh, But one thing I wanted to kind of branch out into was, obviously, we've invested in this new software that allows us to uh, allow call-ins, which will be pretty cool. Um, but I wanted to also uh, have some other style guests. So uh, John Martin is going to come on the show uh, before Red Snapper season opens to talk about Red Snapper and Gag Grouper fishing. We're looking forward to that. That's the Sunday before Red Snapper season opens. John Martin will be our guest. But I also wanted to have someone in here soon to talk about tarpon fishing, since tarpon fishing gets really good in May. Uh, I wanted mm-hmm. to have someone in here, maybe an inshore guy to talk a little bit about snook fishing since snook fishing really picks up in the summertime so i'm not gonna uh totally go inshore or totally go a different way on you guys but i wanted to pepper in a few other styles of fishing to our guests lineup so i wanted to hear some feedback from you guys and uh, let us know what you think about that and if you would totally stop watching the show i mean i'll move over a chair but i'm still gonna say some snide comments yeah yeah, I, I mean, mean I, would, I don't know a whole lot about inshore fishing anymore. I used to think I knew it all, and I could probably still catch a few nice ones, but I'd be interested saying. to learn more about tarpon fishing myself. It'd be cool to have one of those highliner tarpon fishing guys on the show. You mean you don't like it where we just throw a grunt carcass next to our docks and you hand, try to handline a tarp and they jump up in the air and it spits the hook back at you and you're yeah. like pulling out of your back? Yeah, you pull out your back, he, he jumps <laughs> twice and then wraps you on the pole. Yeah. Nick Niaz, appreciate those 200 stars, man. And Dave Decatur with 1,000 stars. Appreciate you, Dave. So let me know what you think about that, guys, having some other uh, guests on the show. Uh, Philip Brittis, the guys from Salt Strong, I would love to have Joe and Luke on the show. I've had Joe Simons on the show before. I'd like to have um, uh, uh, Luke Simons on the show, or maybe Joe and Luke. That'd be really cool to talk about Salt Strong with our buddies uh, that's a great idea. So I will write that one down. Uh, Josh, Josh will write that one down. <laughs> uh, can't be trusted to remember anything. Josh, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that, we are going to get rolling into these questions. So we what, give away trip time. Uh, we already gave away a half day. I guess we should give away a ten yeah. hour before we get into questions. You're right. You're right. Let's see who. Uh, Gino Maxwell, that's a good idea. Adam Franklin, he's a great captain. All right, let's see who won a 10-hour all-day fishing trip for two guests. 10-hour all-day. We actually have official drum roll noise. No, oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate your efforts, though. There you go. Yes, yeah, Salt Strong is awesome, Linda Bull. I agree. The guys over at Salt Strong do a great job. They are uh, a huge asset to our fishery for sure. So that's definitely a good guess that we'll work on getting. Josh, let's see who won that 10-hour all day for two people. 
Where's the drum roll? You, we can't hear the sound effects. They can hear it. Okay. Oh, Brian Eakins. Uh, he was the bottle sponsor the, a couple weeks ago. He brought yeah. us some booze and uh, definitely a longtime viewer as well. So appreciate you watching, Brian. That's pretty cool. Uh, so we've got the 10 hour all day. We gave away the five hour half day. The last trip is going to be that 39 hour fishing trip for one guest. So we still got another big trip to give away. Don't worry. Let's see who won, or let's get into the questions. Yeah. I don't know where I was going I with that. I don't know where you were going. I was about ready to like nudge you or something. Like, like, hey, no, dude, hey, go don't on. go too fast. Slow it down. <laughs> Slow it down. You can't hear the drum roll either, huh? Our sound guy must be distracted. <laughs> Josh, did we get a drum roll? I mean, yeah. did we The drum roll? It? I guess they didn't hear it. Okay. Huh. All right. <laughs> Heard applause, no drum roll. Yeah, that's what happened to me last show, too. I don't know. This wedding is... <laughs> I ordered the salmon. I said it three times. Three times! First question of the night. I'm fishing the 12-hour Hub 2, uh, the extreme trip, and the Friday 39-hour trip. First week of May, what season is open? Well, we talked earlier about uh, Amberjack season opening up in May. I mean, well, uh, winter but, Rome. <laughs> but we also have plenty of other fish open, too. We've got those big red groupers, scamp grouper, and that's really our focus right now uh, is the big, fat red grouper and uh, scamp grouper and big trigger fish uh, and a few mangroves. Uh, but in May, once those jacks open up, we'll definitely throw in at least – one or two spots to uh, perhaps uh, get some of those keeper amberjack. But like I mentioned, the amberjack have definitely been few and far between for sure. So definitely a little tricky on the amberjack. So if we don't totally uh, cater the trip to amberjack, just keep that in mind, guys. And yes, Joe Spilla, this is a live show, so there are live mistakes. This is real. As, <laughs> as well. Real. This is not recorded. <laughs> not recorded, no. Definitely not. <clears throat> it is recorded. You can watch it later, okay. but it's happening live now. You must be a first-time watcher, then. First-time right? viewer, yeah. First-time viewer. <laughs> watcher. First-time watcher. Someone asked what we were pouring. This uh, was our bottle of Eagle Rare from our friend John Anderson. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see. Next question. Didn't hear the drum roll either. either. Yeah, we know. <laughs> it's not that it's better than the others. We're just trying to bring them all at the same run. Yeah, so we're, we're almost there. We'll go ahead and kick that one. Then we got two more. But, but this will be the after party. We yeah. should be able to get through that in the next 30, 30 minutes. <laughs> How is the weather looking for this Tuesday for the 10-hour trip? So uh, earlier this morning, Tuesday was not looking as uh, good weather-wise, but we just looked at the weather a little bit ago, and it did calm down quite a bit. It looks doable now for Tuesday. A little bumpy in the morning, but it gets better in the afternoon. That's what yeah. I saw. Yep. Yeah, yeah still, still, still looks the same. A little bumpy in the morning. And it's similar to today, how Frank was saying it was a slow morning bite and then it picked up in the afternoon as the weather calmed down and tuesday uh it's the exact opposite but similar today because today it was uh, a hot or a low pressure coming in making the weather bumpy in the morning and then the low went through and the weather mm -hmm. calmed down and the fish picked up tuesday we've got a high pressure pushing a stronger east wind and then it moves out of the area and that weather calms down and uh, hopefully the fishing will pick up just like uh today so yeah. the high pressure going through instead of a low pressure, but definitely uh, hoping for similar results. All right, next question. Can we bring beach chairs? Yeah, that's not our question for the show. Uh, while free lining, how long and weight leader would you use with live pinfish? So free lining, I assume that, that you mean flat line fishing. Uh, so... Typically, I would use braided line when I'm flatlining, and I would only use about maybe a five to six foot piece of around 50 pound fluorocarbon oh. with about a, a three to four aught circle hook with a tail hooked pinfish. Uh, can you go back up to that one? There, I think there was no. It kind of matters that. what you were fishing for. Did I miss that? What? Uh, was it that's when I'm. Or something, that's or? when I'm reading the top one. Morning. Just attempting to make sure I have. 
uh, yeah, because got my oldest son reserved and paid. Uh, a lot of times, so, if I'm just using it like a, a jig, oh, that's with live pin, live pinfish. Yeah, they're asking about live pinfish, so I assume they're talking about like, deeper water, and you would use. I was assuming snook fishing. No, nah, no, it is the live show. Hopefully, I, ho- because I'm we assuming, don't normally free line pinfish off the off the back of the boat. So you, you would on like say a 39 hour trip for blackfin tuna. So if there's tuna uh, around, okay, well. you're you're flatlining uh, tail hooked pinfish, or if you see a right. cobia, or if you see one of those rare times that we see the billfish around the boat. Uh, no wire, not a kingfish rig. 50 pound floral, 40, 50 pound floral, about a three to four out circle, and a tail hooked pinfish is the way I'd go. And the length I had, is what she's asking. Yeah, about five to six foot. Five to yeah, six yeah, foot. Yeah, it doesn't have to be long at all. I mean, yeah, you want to hide For any that of those rate. fish, like a, a cobia or a tuna, it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Five, five feet, you know, is all, is all you really need. Short enough to cast, long enough to hide the braid is what you're yeah, looking for. Yeah. So if you, if you can tie a good line to line knot, like an FG knot, uh, then you would want to go with uh, a longer leader because you can still cast that through the eyes of your uh, rod. If you are tying a double uni knot that doesn't go through the guides as well, you'd want to tie a shorter leader so you don't have to pull that knot through your guides. Uh, so it, it definitely varies on what you're fishing for, um, but yeah. So this one I see on Facebook, and I've heard this quite a few times, so I definitely want to address this. Do you agree with the salt strong interpretation about mono being a better choice than fluoro? So the salt strong guys did a, again, great guys and great videos. Some of the best, way better videos than our videos. Uh, I aspire to be like them one day. But uh, they did a really cool series comparing monofilament versus fluorocarbon. I've got things to say on it also. What do you think? Uh, well, that's a good question, Dylan. <laughs> so uh, there are. I'll hold my opinion so to the end. For grouper, I do prefer monofilament. Uh, all of my my grouper rods, when I go out grouper fishing, have all monofilament on them. On no, the on the main line, are no you talking braid. about leader? No braid whatsoever. Oh, a hundred percent. But then that's not what we're talking about. So I, I agree use, with you. I use braid for hogfish, mangoes, every everything else. But when it comes down to grouper fishing. I prefer monofilament straight. I feel like you didn't hear the question. I oh. agree with you completely on everything you just said. Oh, okay. When I'm snapper fishing, I like a little bit of braid for the sensitivity. When I'm grouper right. fishing, amberjack fishing, you don't want any braid on that no. reel. I want to go full mono. Full mono. But the question and the comparison is monofilament versus fluorocarbon, not monofilament oh, versus oh. braid. I thought there was some braid mixed in there. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid eagle rare. <laughs> so for me, monofilament is my go-to for my main line. But when it comes to leader line, I prefer fluorocarbon. And not because fluorocarbon disappears in the water better than monofilament. I agree that the premise of that salt strong comparison was, does fluorocarbon disappear better than bra- or monofilament is monofilament superior to fluorocarbon is fluorocarbon superior to uh, monofilament and as far as disappearing in the water and, and making you more stealthy mm-hmm. uh, presenting your bait to fish to me fluorocarbon is the preferred for leader line not because it disappears better but because it's stiffer it has less memory and it's more abrasion resistant so that's why I would always stick to fluorocarbon for my leader line. Whereas monofilament, softer, it tends to have memory. It works great for main line because it gives you that shock absorption, uh, but it has a lot of memory to it. So if you tie up a leader with monofilament, it's going to be more curly. And it's, it's, it's not going to lay as straight. It's not going to appear as natural. Which one disappears in the water better? The technology is far advanced from where it used to be. Fluorocarbon used to be the mandatory go-to when you're talking leader, but nowadays you can get monofilaments that are equally superior to fluorocarbon. And you can even get monofilament that's pretty darn abrasion resistant, but as far as hardness and no and less memory, mon, uh, fluorocarbon is still far superior, in my opinion. What's yours? I think that's... I, I'm in agreement with what you're saying. However... When I when I do go out fishing, you know, on, on my time, which is 
literally rare. <laughs> maybe two days a year, where where when I'm when I have a day off, I will go out there and get on another boat and go grouper fishing. <clears throat> I do th- I do things a little different. I I use straight hundred hundred, and I use a I use I go old school and I use the the one the one fourteen H, uh, big pens and I've got uh, great uh, rod the, one of the rods that you 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 sold uh, sold me. It's, yeah, it's the killer favorite. sticks. Is that what it is? Killer mm-hmm. stick, <clears throat> and, it, and I love it. And and I'll just put on a an entire half a slab of bonita, and drop it down there, and I'll just sit there and wait for the big dog. Yeah, like that's just where where my life is nowadays. After catching so many fish, it's like I just want the one that just doesn't want the pinfish this big. I want the one that wants the half of Benita that big. <laughs> and and it's and it, it surprisingly very seldom do I get a shark. But when I do get uh, catch a, a red grouper, and it's almost every time I go out, I'll catch a red grouper, and it is 18 pounds plus. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, because you're might using sit, big bait. Yeah, because I'm sitting there using the big bait. I don't want the all the little ones pecking away at it. Go for it, you know? Mm-hmm. And, I'll, and I'll run a 12-odd hook. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, that's what I do on my day a off. A 12-odd like, hook yeah, with it's a, big a big slab one. of bonita. That's right. For red grouper? Yeah, for red grouper. It, the gags will eat them, too. We've got 40-inch gags and, like... And, uh, you know, 130 feet of water doing that. And uh, they just want that thing. Yeah. And, a lot of, you know, a lot of people can't even imagine using a bait that big. You know, a half a bonita. But I can for sharks. Totally. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it works. You, uh, know, you or, never know. You know. Don't knock it if it works. It does. Or, or you catch those those big lizard fish every once in a while. You get offshore and they're like, you know, you're 100 foot of water. And you're like, oh, my God, that's the biggest lizard fish I've ever seen. I will slap that thing on the hook so fast. Yeah. Those gag groupers, I hate those things. Yeah, they want for some reason they just want to eat them. Yeah, lizard fish. I remember when uh, I was first mate on the ten hour trips with you, and when we catch lizard fish, we put them off to the side, and we'd use them occasionally for people who were having a little bit tougher of a day, mm-hmm. and they always produced nice big red grouper and yeah. occasionally some for big sure. gags. That was when we were you know able to get 25, 45 head of red grouper yeah. every. Trip. You had a you had and, a lot and, less grain, and, and I do believe then. that will be back. I do, I do. Do what? <laughs> I said you had a lot less gray in your beard then too. <laughs> it's salt. <laughs> it's just salt. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely uh, the the lizard fish make a great bait for sure. And uh, I've seen a couple people comment about our discussion as far as monofilament versus braid. And I think for big fish, the idea behind braid is braid cuts through the water better and gives you more sensitivity. Inshore, braid gives you better casting distance, which is important when you're throwing artificials and you're trying to target uh, small areas on a on a on a shoreline or on a a flat. But offshore, braid simply gives you more sensitivity and cuts through the water better. So when you're vertical jigging, when you're knocker rigging, when you're deep dropping, braid is pretty much mandatory. When you're bottom fishing for natural with natural bait, dead bait, live bait, uh, on the bottom, bottom fishing less than 250 foot of water, braid is 100% not necessary. It helps. It gives you a better sensitivity, and you can feel the bite better, but it is 100% not necessary. And, you know, there's, there's some thoughts to, you know, where, okay, the braid doesn't stretch, so that grouper's not going to get in the hole. But if you, if you get on that fish when he bites... And, like, you, you've got your drag locked, and, you know, because I, I will lock, at 100% lock my six out as hard as I can and with that 100-pound. And I just, you know, when when I feel that first bite, and I go for it. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of people that don't understand what going for it means. It is not just like, oh, you know, with your... It's I'm a talking fight of like, your life. I'm talking like you, you start cranking and pumping that thing off the bottom, and, and it does stretch. And, and that fish, that he doesn't know what to do. Uh, that braid, you know, it is extremely strong. It's very sensitive, but I... I compare it to, like, like if you're getting in a fight. Like, if, you, if you're if you ready to get in a, a fight, someone someone just push your wife or whatever it is, yeah. you go yeah. into that. You're, like you're, you're not, gonna, like, bumping chest. Yeah. You just, you just, you're, you're ready you're like, to go off. This is happening right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, like, you go okay. zero to 100 real yeah. quick. 
And that's how it is with these grouper. I mean, you're gag grouper fishing with a, a slab of bonita or one of those big pinfish. You got to be ready to put it down. Yeah. And you got to be ready to lay the hammer down. For and when sure. you feel that bite going, you got to go to war. And yeah. if you're not ready for it, just stick to the stick to the thread fin plugs and the light tackle yeah. for the mangroves because you got to put the hammer down and you got to just go for broke. And uh, just don't stop cranking until you got him up off the bottom. And once he's up off the bottom, yeah. then you got to slow down, yeah. and then it's all finesse. I had a few uh, saw a few times the question but popped up. Real so, quick though, yeah, yeah. I do I do want to add. Uh, I saw people talk about how they don't like the top shot and braid was the best. It's not because when braid came out, I can't tell you how many times that uh, when it when it came out it was a new cool thing. And, yeah. I'm 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 a, I fancy myself a little younger, little little newer generation, and new fancy stuff comes out. I want to try the new right. technology, so I went all braided line across the board as well and, as I did. Yeah, and immediately first trip, I cannot tell you how many fish I lost because you hook the fish, you're cranking the fish to the surface, and then he comes off the hook, or you str- or you straighten the hook out because it's so strong and there's no stretch. Yeah, you straighten the hook, you break the hook, you, the fish spits the hook, and that's because nine out of ten times when you re- re- reel up a fish when you don't have a top shot and you're fishing braid, he's got a big <clears throat> hole in the side of his mouth, like a, something you could stick your whole thumb through or or two or three fingers through because that braided line doesn't have the stretch whereas monofilament you're using that monofilament it gives you a shock absorber and it's basically like your truck you don't want to ride in a truck without shock. It's like a Model T. Yeah, you want to ride in a truck with a little yeah. bit of shock absorption. My truck rides rough because it's got offshore right. competition shocks. It's not a big shock. It's not soft shocks, but it's got a little bit of shock absorption, so you can still go extreme off-roading, but it feels comfortable to ride through the city, and that's the idea with the braided line and a top shot. Yeah. You still have a majority of braid. You still don't have as much stretch as fish and straight mono. You have the sensitivity because you got braid in the water, but that top shot softens it a little bit, and you don't tear that hole as big. You don't give that fish a chance to spit your hook, and you're party boat fishing. you got to have a top shot because... You do get tangled, even if you're a super expert angler. And, we and just, if you get we, tangled, we have to cut the braid. I mean, yeah, if like, you get tangled with a, braid, your whole your not, whole line's getting right. cut. Whereas if you got top shot nine out of ten times, if you're monitoring yeah. your line and you start to feel that line touching yours, you can crank up real fast, yeah. and a lot of times make sure that tangle occurs on your top shot, and then you can get it untangled instead of cutting your line. Now, you can totally still get away with, with the with the braid fishing, you know, for the mangroves and hogs if you're casting out there, but I had a few people today that were dropping straight down with the braid, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, if man, you drop straight down with cool. braid. Mm-hmm. You got to be, you got, no. you got to know what you're doing a little bit. You got to get, you got to get it away from the boat, and because uh, I had a few instances where, where the lines were getting caught up because they were just like literally just flipping a bale on a spinner rod and dropping straight down. I'm like, you can't do that. Yeah. You can't do that on a party boat with 60 lines, not happening. You, you yeah. have to be able to get it out. And there. that was one of the most tricky things <laughs> with our website was uh, when Braid first started becoming a thing, trying to change the website to say, all right, we allow Braid, but you got to do X, Y, and Z. Mm. And then it, it came to no Braid, and then it was Braid with the top shot. And it's, it's, a such, tough, it's, it's a, such a tough thing to dance around. It is, around. because, every, you know, if you're inshore fishing, yeah, Braid is awesome because it goes far, and you can, you know, you can – Loosen your drag, and you know it's. It, it, you can cast a mile with it, and yeah, braid is absolutely one hundred percent inshore. I mm-hmm. would absolutely use it one hundred percent. The sensitivity of it, everything is awesome. But just yeah. when it comes to offshore fishing, you know maybe maybe you can get away with it. You know, with two or three people on your boat, you got your own personal boat. But like in the, in the business we're in, it just it just doesn't work. And, and the, it braid also, works, but you got to be an experienced angler. Right. You got to know what you're like, doing, and you got to have a top shot. Right. And as long as you're doing those things and you're keeping your line up right. current by ca- underhand casting away, up current and not down current or not perpendicular to the current, as long as you know what you're doing, it's not a problem. I'm not gonna lie. I was so impressed with the the, the, the Sunshine Skyway Fishing Club that we had out there today. That uh, how few. Tangles we had, I couldn't believe it. 
I couldn't believe it that we were fishing that deep. And most, most or a lot of them were using two ounce leads, one ounce leads. And there was like, you know, people, you know, underhand casted everywhere. And I, I just couldn't believe how few, I think we had maybe three like tangles in, in, on a party, in party boat fishing. That is not a lot. And they, it just, not it, that we have a lot of tangles, but right. No, no, no. <laughs> well, no, when, I, when you have, um, you know, 60 people that are using spinning rods and, and fishing in 70 to 90 feet of water, <laughs> you would think in your head, Dylan, that that, yeah. that could never go well. Yeah. And I was thinking myself, I'm like, oh, my God, if I if I really take them out there to this deep water, how bad is this going to be? Yeah. And, it, man, it, it was awesome. There was, like, literally. Experienced anglers. Yeah. That it, helps it, a lot. Right. It sure does. And that's where I was going with that. Sorry, forgetting about that. Yeah. You, you were getting down the rabbit trail. I, I brought you back. So uh, one thing I see here is about length of top shot. So general rule of thumb, the more experienced you are, the more uh, you shorten up your top shot. Uh, so newer anglers who are just starting out with braid, you want to go closer to uh, a third, maybe even a half of your line in the water should be monofilament or fluorocarbon top shot. And a top shot is just simply a, a leader before your leader. So you have braided line, you do a line to line knot, you add a certain amount of monofilament or fluorocarbon, then you put your egg sinker on your swivel and your leader and your hook. So it's a leader before your leader. That's what a top shot is. And your top shot length is typically about a third of your line in the water. So if you're fishing a hundred foot of water, about a 30 foot top shot is average. Now, if you're more experienced, you'd shorten that up. If you're less experienced, you might go a little above and beyond that. Generally, myself, I like starting right around a third, maybe a little less than a third, because most of the time through the trip, what happens? You catch a few fish, you might, you might catch a big fish, you might get in a tangle, you're going to lose some of that top shot. So like say on a 39-hour trip, I might go, if I'm fishing 150 foot of water, I might put a a 35 40 foot top shot on by the end of the trip mm -hmm. that might have to be retied once or it yeah. might only be 10 15 feet by the end of the trip because i've had to yeah. cut it a few times <laughs> right because and make you sure you check out our, our video that we did on, on how to do the top shot too yeah we, we did an awesome braid to monofilament line and will mcclure was very upset that we called that the captain frank special why because he to this, call the Will this, this was off air. I will share the story with you guys. So Josh is going to show us real quick how to find the fish and tips tricks, fishing tips and tricks page. If you're on our website, hubbardsmarina.com, click fishing trips, scroll down to fishing video links and click that fishing tips and tricks page under the fishing video links. And you'll see all the fishing tips and tricks videos. We've got a ton of them on there ton of them are from our friends at salt strong uh, under the rigging tips there's a bunch of different knots in here uh, salt strong has a bunch of them we've worked with salt strong on a couple of them but the how to tie the captain frank special caused some drama you can totally the change that i don't care i i don't <laughs> care people i just wanted to show you it caused some drama I, around I the docks. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, guys. <laughs> Don't care. It was pretty funny. But check out that video uh, for that uh, line to line knot that Will McClure is taking credit for. But oh, he, oh, he's saying he came up with it? No, he's saying that he introduced it. That's what he's saying. Oh. He's saying that he taught you that knot. Mm. That's the story I heard. Mm. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, sure you did. Perfect. <laughs> Call it the Will McClure knot. I, it's fine. I... I you're the one who filmed the video. I'll give you credit I, on that I, I just because don't care. you get I the just credit because you filmed the want, video. Dude, I care. Look, if you want to know how to tie, tie braid to monofilament, I appreciate you filming that video, man. I'm there for you, brother. Just calm just down. Just like I am here let's, today let's after a ten-hour trip. I've been up since five a.m. Next Try question. Trying to make this all happen. Next By the question. way, there's a couple of questions that people were asking if I was working Tuesday and Thursday. I work Tuesday Probably and not. Thursday all day trips. <laughs> And uh, not the Sunday all day. So I saw that like six times people have said, asked if I was working Tuesday all day. Yes, Captain Bobby, uh, who's been uh, fishing local waters for like 50 years. <laughs> Very experienced captain, does our Sunday 10-hour trips. Captain Frank does our Tuesday and Thursday 10-hour trips. And you do Wednesday five-hour half days. No, I do Monday and Friday half days and sometimes Saturdays. 
pretty much the only I'm captain usually of the off fleet Wednesday and Sunday. who has a set schedule. Right. Also, I'm, also causes drama around. I think around the I'm the only captain that usually has weekends off. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Next question. <laughs> that might not be true. Uh, what would you suggest as the best universal spinning combo for fishing in the bay? So, best universal fishing co- spinning. Shakespeare no. XLT 4000 with a <laughs> ugly stick. i punch you right in the face. <laughs> so, in my opinion, Daiwa makes the best products. The new Daiwa Procyon <laughs> AL is one of the coolest reels out on the market right now. I love the Daiwa Procyon AL. We're getting it in our shop soon, but unfortunately, Daiwa is super backward. You want to hear a cool story? I'm a Daiwa fan, too. I'm a diehard Daiwa fan. Not right. sponsored, right. not promoting Daiwa by any means. I just like their products. Uh, Shimano makes great stuff. I really like Shimano, too. I've always been a huge fan of the Shimano. Um, but if you want to sponsor us, Daiwa, it's okay. <laughs> the, the Shimano, what's the real light Shimano? Stratic. I've always been a... F- Huge fan of the this. CI4. Yeah, oh, the Stratic yeah. CI4. I had an original Stratic with the wood handle before the CI4, but the too. the new Procyon from Daiwa is comparable to the Stratic in look uh, in uh, weight, and it's mag sealed. It's bad to the bone. It's a great reel, and it's good priced. It's not gonna kill your pocket. Uh, the BG series is great. Daiwa has a ton of different series that'll work well. Shimano Stratic, there's a bunch of Shimanos out there that are good. Me personally, I loathe Penn, and uh, I loathe their customer service. I've had the worst wholesale experiences with Penn. Their their, uh, rep at the uh, shows uh, just treats you like garbage. It's crazy. And they're owned by Zebco now, so there. Well... I had the same issue on my last three pens I bought. Yeah, they're paint garbage. chipping off them. They're heavier than hell. Yeah, but the paint chipping off them, and then all the all the little uh, the rivets or the, not the rivets, the uh, corrode the, the little like a mofo. corrode so bad. Yeah, that I I can't even believe they're they're still a thing. Pen like, pen makes some good high end. I buy stuff. the old pens, the yeah. old pen the, with the with the, uh, the the not the graphite spools, the, the metal old, ones, the old metal. Yeah, uh, that's what I use. I have, old 6 out 114 H's. That, I have a ton of them. old pen reels. Yeah. I got a pen 4 out, 6 out, 9 out, 12 out, and 14, and a 16 out at the house. I've got a 17. <laughs> so I've got a bunch of pen reels, but they're all the old school American made, all metal spools, all metal side plates. Good, good, good quality stuff. They don't make them like they used no, to. No, let me tell you. Them in China and and now they're it. owned by it. Zebco Pure Fishing. It's this huge conglomerate. Go Shimano, go Daiwa. Shimano accurate Daiwa for sure. Florida fishing products. All good options. Um, there's others that I can't think of on the spot. The Tsunami. They make some good. George products. Dickel. <laughs> also, George Dickel. Jameson makes a great product. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I, I prefer Daiwa for sure. And the new Procyon is bad to the bone. All right. So all around uh, combo to answer your question is I would go 4,000. A 4,000 will get you a trout yep. fishing. It will land a snook. Uh, a 4,000 is good in the middle of the road. You can do the hog thing. fishing with it too. Mm-hmm. Same thing. One thing that was brought up to me today by a customer or a guest, a fishing friend, and uh, was a great idea is – the problem nowadays is like on our website, we suggest for this trip you should bring a four aught and some six aught reels. And a lot of people are like, What's a four aught? What's a six aught? Because now it's like, a, oh, oh, the Daiwa LD30, the uh, Daiwa yeah. LD50, the accurate 7500. Yeah. And Maybe the, we need the reels aren't sized normally anymore. And now, even Spinning you reels. You've got reels that are th- this yeah. big that are yeah. th- th- that have 80 pounds of drag or something. Yeah, it's and like... now the spinning reels are doing the same thing. Like, yeah. Daiwa's new 4,000. The 4,000 Saltiga has, like, 50-plus pounds of drag. What? what? It's ridiculous. It's absolutely off the charts. So now these reels have changed so much with the technology that the drag is really where it's at. Yeah. So someone asked and said that we need to redo our videos with 
uh, drag ratings. That, that, I and think some, that's that's so, a great suggestion. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some uh, some guys together, some guys, maybe some gals. Josh, uh, Josh, you're gonna get on this, and we're gonna get <laughs> a, a down, whole Josh. panel. We're gonna get a whole panel up here of <laughs> five, six of us, and we're gonna debate the best reels for each trip. And you're a master at that. Yes. Yeah, debating. He's a master debater. I'm very good. <laughs> I will manipulate and persuade you to believing. <laughs> no, but we'll we'll uh, get a panel of people together and for each trip. So we'll go five hour. What do we think is the best? Cool. Ten hour, twelve hour, and then we'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit about our uh, rental rods mm -hmm. too. So for each fishing trip page, we'll have that video, uh, and I think it'll be a great way to meet the captains and crew and a great way sure. to kind of promote our personal favorite products. And it'll Love be pretty it. cool. Good idea, right? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Josh, did you write that one down? Absolutely. It's, it's about time. All right, so Shimano Stella Series. Yeah, Shimano makes great products, but you might as well just open the door and throw your wallet right through it. <laughs> they, have, they are very proud of their tackle. Now, I can't talk too much crap about them because my big thing with Daiwa L or the Daiwa LD50 Saltiga two speed was it was four ninety nine retail and it was the exact same reel in my opinion if not the same or better than the Shimano Talica the Shimano okay. Talica was seven twenty nine seven forty nine yeah the Daiwa Saltiga was four ninety nine so. Yeah. Almost the same reel, same drag power, same everything. One was four ninety nine, one was seven forty nine. So three hundred dollar difference. But now Daiwa has re engineered their Saltiga line and the new Daiwa fifty is six forty nine. <laughs> so it's still a hundred dollars cheaper, but you remember it is when the wagon wheel the wagon wheel flea market was open, you could go get a six hot pen one fourteen H for about eighty bucks. <laughs> Yep, those days are over soon. <laughs> yeah. So but I do think the, about, uh, I did see someone ask about the new um, Saltigas, and the new Saltigas have been on order. The story I was going to tell earlier was about Daiwa. They're so popular, and uh, COVID messed so many things up, that Daiwa International, Daiwa USA Corporation, uh, January 17th of this year, met their sales goals from January till August. So as of the 17th of this year, they had met their first eight months sales goals. That's pretty fantastic. In 17 days. And they had awesome. to close their receiving plant because literally product comes in to Daiwa receiving, the truck backs up, they unload the truck and put it on other trucks to go to tackle shops. Stuff doesn't even come in to uh, the receiving anymore. So that's how crazy it is right now. Are we running low on time? Right? We are running very low on time. We're about to end it up. So the last thing I'm going to comment is people commenting about the Speedmaster. The, the Shimano Speedmaster was uh, Shimano's answer to the Saltist series from Daiwa. So Daiwa has the Saltist and then the Saltiga. The Saltiga was comparable to the Talica. But the Talica didn't have a Saltis model, which was just a little step down, a little cheaper. The Speedmaster is that answer. So the Speedmaster is a great reel, and it's very comparable to the Saltis. And in my opinion, I'd still stick We're to that. We're a lot of bad pen rep, uh, rap. Yeah. What do you mean? A lot of people hating about yeah, our pen? Yeah, because about the pen. Pe people love pen. Pen, pen is your pen gran my grandfather. I just bought a, a Pen Conflict 1000 yeah. just for the... the the tininess of it. Pen Pen makes a great product. Don't get Two me wrong. Ago. But I've had very bad experiences yeah. with their products, with their service, with their people, and I personally will never ever recommend nor buy Pen Reels. And but that's my to, personal opinion. To each their own. Everybody's entitled to their yeah. own opinion. My grandfather fished Pen, my father fished Pen, I fished dial. We go to different hair salons, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. All right, so it is time to give away our 39-hour fishing trip. Uh, don't forget, though, if you are in our supporters page, if you are a Hubbard's Marina supporter, don't forget to pop over to that supporters-only group where our supporters-only after show uh, starts 
about five minutes after our live show ends. Uh, definitely a great time and uh, some good information there. And if you're a supporter, you get some exclusive content. You get a little better communication. And uh, been trying to step up our videos today. We did a little uh, behind-the-scenes wrap-up on the 44-hour with Will and Jason. Been doing a few live videos while I'm driving home, updating y'all from the day. So definitely some cool stuff in that supporters after uh, in that supporters group. And you can become a supporter right at the top of our Hubbard's Marina Facebook page. So join us in the Hubbard's Marina supporters group for that private supporters after show and plenty of other exclusive content. And with that, we'll see you all next week for another episode. Don't forget that. Hopefully we'll see you every week, 8.30 p.m. right here on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook and YouTube channel. Josh, let's find out who won that 39-hour trip, Josh, roll that beautiful bean footage. Beautiful bean footage. Winner of the 39-hour trip for one guest you waited all this is long. You listen to us idiots. Dustin <laughs> O'Hare from Indiana. Dustin O'Hare. Dustin O'Hare. Hare. <laughs> from Indiana. Eagle rare, rare, rare. <laughs> Message us right. at that phone number down there, Dustin. If we didn't get to your question, I will go back through and answer your questions either sometime <clears throat> tonight or tomorrow morning. And uh, don't forget, if you're too busy to go mm-hmm. fishing, you're just too darn busy. You took my part. I did take your part. So. Let's finish these bottles. We'll talk about this. Join later. us at the supporter show, guys. Remember, we'll see you next week for another episode, and make sure you comment on the video. Tell us who you want.